couple of videos ago, I said that I would come back to uh, the Git Countries Info tutorial that I did with the Chart.js component <clears throat> and fix the flex uh, display because at the moment it looks like this where it doesn't fit the page properly. It overlaps and then there's a scroll bar here on the right. So th this is going to be a super short video. I just want to fix that one issue and then also show you what else I'm working on because I jumped down a rabbit hole as I will show you uh, in a few minutes. And that's why, if you're wondering, I didn't post a video earlier today or yesterday. So as you can see here, let me refresh. <clears throat> so the chart we have from a few videos ago takes up more than 100% of the view height. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go back to our designer um, and open our get country info view here. Remember, this is just an iframe that points to our Python resource, this one here. So we shouldn't need to change anything on the perspective view, but let's open get country info. There's a few things I found uh, that fixed the problem we were running into. First of all, instead of using width and height this way, I found that if you use style, if you use the CSS style width and height, uh, width and height, uh, it works as we expect it to. I'm not sure if that's um, a bug with, with chart.js or if that's in the documentation somewhere. So let's go ahead and make this change here. So instead of having width and height to be properties of the canvas, uh, let's apply a style to it here like this. Let's save and then go back. And if we refresh, you can see that it is normal now, back to normal. Let's uh, refresh and let's try resizing. As you can see, it grows and shrinks. Uh, as we resize our screen, of course, this is not very responsive. Let's go to iPhone X. I mean, this chart in particular doesn't look too bad, but if our charts got longer, for example, we had more columns here, it could look terrible. So that alone uh, fixed the issue. Another thing I added to my Git Country Info is there's a property for chart.js that I found in, on their documentation site. Um, let me see here. Okay, here. So under responsive, um, there's a section here. There's a few properties. Responsive uh, defaults to true and uh, maintain aspect ratio. So responsive defaults to true. We don't need to add it. Maintain aspect ratio also defaults to true, uh, but we don't necessarily want this to be the case. So let's go ahead and add the property and set it to false and see, and oops, and let's see what happens. So if we go back to our, oops, sorry. If we go back to this page here, you can see that as you drag it, for some reason, I'm not sure why it's not re-rendering without having to refresh as you resize the screen. Uh, there might be an event that we need to trigger, um, you know, on screen resize or something so that it reloads the chart right away. But as you can see, it doesn't maintain the aspect ratio. So here, for example, it's a pretty nice square. But if you refresh, uh, you can see that it's rectangular. So this is a useful property if you don't want your graph just to be square. So if we set it to true, um, just so we see what it's what it's actually doing. I guess it's not doing what I thought it was doing. Let's just set it to false in this case. Okay, so that pretty much takes care of our chart issue. Uh, let's refresh this, and we can see that it fills this iframe completely, 100%. So I thought, well, what if I have four charts? Uh, how do I make them behave in a way that I want them to? So I created another view. Um, you don't need to really create this, but I'll show you how I did it in case you're interested. So I have 
the same project but with four of the charts. So the method I used here is four inline frame components. So this is an inline frame, an iframe, an iframe, iframe, and iframe. And then I just set the source um, to the same URL, but there is a caveat I'll show you here in a second. And then when I resize and refresh, um, well, because, because of the way uh, the wrap is set right now, uh, it reset, ref, resize is kind of funky. So there's a, a row, a row, and then a row, and two columns within that bottom row, which may be what you want. But all of this here is using just perspective components, and I believe um, it's this one here, info test. I believe, so I have a, two flex containers, well, a top level flex container, and then a top row and a bottom row. Uh, these are just set to rows and to grow and to fill. And then these are also set to grow. So it fills in every, in every way that it can. And then this guy here is set to wrap. That is why when you resize it past a certain point, it behaves the way that it does. And this one is set to no wrap. So since it's set to wrap here, when we go past a breakpoint, there's a certain breakpoint that triggers this, um, them to stack on top of each other. And then as you can see here, the bottom flex container, this flex top is set to wrap. The bottom one is set to no wrap. And that's what gives you this behavior here. And this may be what you want. Okay, and then what I really got stuck on was trying to use Bootstrap. So if you don't know, I rave about Bootstrap all the time, uh, but it's a framework. It's basically prepackaged to CSS and JavaScript that lets you build web pages very easily. And uh, Bootstrap has one of my favorite features, um, one of my favorite features is the grid system. So if you go to uh, layout here and then grid, you can see that they have predefined CSS classes called, for example, here, call dash SM. So a small column here. And I was curious how uh, my chart JS chart page would look if I used Bootstrap. So one of these is using Bootstrap. I believe it's this one here. Test three. I, I wasn't able to figure out the row height. Uh, I think it should be pretty easy. But you can see that <clears throat> okay, that's something I need to figure out why it's not refreshing. But you can see that as I drag so for example, if you're on a phone and you're flipping from landscape to portrait mode, uh, Bootstrap very easily allows you to wrap these and it allows you to use breakpoints for large, for medium, uh, small and extra small screens. So you can specify exactly what happens no matter what device you're using. And you can see that all of this behavior here, uh, all it comes down to is just using these predefined CSS classes here, row and then column MB6, call MB6 here again. <clears throat> I want to make a video, an in-depth video on Bootstrap and how to use it with the mission. Uh, that might be one of the next things I do. But that is it for this video. So to recap um, how we fixed this page, this is what we were, sorry, this page. We were left with a page that uh, you had to scroll on the y-axis and now we have a page that you don't need to scroll so notice that if you go back and make your view here smaller so if you set your grow to zero for example and then save you should be able to go back and then your uh, your graph adjusts itself accordingly so it fills the iframe component 100%. So as you can see here, my iframe component. Oh, 
there's my iframe component and it fills approximately half of the screen and then when I go into a session it's the same thing here and then I can put a table or whatever else I want under here so stay tuned for more cool videos I'm working with bootstrap I was trying to figure out a way how to use um, their CSS without actually pulling in all of bootstrap CSS so what I mean is if you go to docs and get started here you can take this URL, copy it, and open it in a new page, and you get the minified CSS here. So for example, if you want to see how they define or how they style a table, you can just search for table and then see all the CSS properties. So I was trying to go through and find all the column and row stylings, but then in the end, I just decided to import all of it. So I have a sample, um, Python resource here called Git Country Info Bootstrap. All I do is add the script or add the the CSS, the minified CSS here, file, and then I just add the script here. And this allows me to use Bootstrap's library. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you have questions, let me know in the comments or on Discord. Uh, stay tuned though in the next couple days. I will be releasing another video. I also have a, an idea for a fun series <clears throat> I can do It's based on a fictitious business that I thought and that I think would be interesting to start um, But that's in the future. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this was worth your time um, Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video